This is the second video on limits and derivatives. And what I'd like to cover here is a review of e evaluating derivatives, including a review of various rules, the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, and the power rule, for example. I'll review briefly what higher order derivatives are, then discuss Le Hopital's rule for computing limits of indeterminate form, and then we'll cover briefly a review of derivatives of some specific functions. What I'd like you to take away from this video, as well as the relevant problems in the problem set, will be to become refamiliarized with what derivatives are, how to take them, and, um, and basically become more comfortable in computing derivatives of different functions. So let's let's compute some derivatives. Let's remind ourselves how to take derivatives of certain functions. So for example, if we have a constant, the derivative of a constant with respect to the independent variable, which in this case we'll call x, the derivative of a constant is 0. Right? The constant does not change as we change x a little bit. Let's consider taking the derivative of x raised to the n power with respect to x, where um, n is a non-zero integer or fraction. It can be an integer or fraction, but it can't be 0. So the derivative of that is, remember, we have to multiply the exponent n by x, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So that's n times x raised to the minus n power. Right? So, for example, um, the derivative with respect to x of x cubed is equal to 3x squared. Okay, um, well, let's look at another uh, relatively simple case where we have c times the derivative, or c times x, and we want to take the derivative of that. And that's simply c times d, sorry, c times a function of x, which we'll call u. And we're taking the derivative of that. And that's just c times the derivative of u with respect to x. A fourth type of derivative is the derivative of two function of the sum of two functions u and v which are both functions of x and that's simply equal to the sum of the derivative of u with respect to x plus the derivative of v with respect to x and likewise um, we can take the derivative of the difference of two functions and that's the derivative of u with respect to x minus minus derivative of v with respect to x. So now let's look at um, the product rule for derivatives. If we want to take the derivative of the product of two functions, u and v, then remember we have to take well, we would take u times the derivative of v with respect to x, and we add that to v times the derivative of u with respect to x. Well, the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. The quotient rule, and actually, well, I don't, really like the quotient rule myself because it's just another rule to remember. I prefer 
to apply the product rule to the product of u uh, v to the minus 1. Right. OK, so that is if we want to take the derivative of u over v, we can write that as the product of u times v to the minus 1. And that's simply equal to du dx times v to the minus 1 minus, now we have to take the derivative of the second term, which is, well, well it's plus minus 1, and then we have v to the minus 2 dv dx times u. Okay, that's how I like to do quotients. And, well, okay, that's not really the quotient rule, but that's how I do quotients. Let's look at the chain rule. So let's say that we have y being equal to a function of another function of x, okay, again, u uh, is a function of x, and we can write that, the chain rule says that the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of f with respect to u, times the derivative of u with respect to x. And uh, we're using Leibniz's notation for derivatives. And it's convenient because this equation looks and acts just like the product of two fractions, df over du times du over dx. So for example, if we have y, is equal to, say, cosine of x squared plus 1. So f is the cosine function. And u is equal to x squared plus 1. So the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of cosine with respect to u and the derivative of cosine is minus sine. And we have to, it's the minus sine of u. And then we have to multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x, which is just 2x. That's equal to minus 2x sine of x squared plus 1. And then last, let's cover the power rule. It's really just a special case of the, of the chain rule. And so if we, if we want to take the derivative of u raised to the n power, And that is just n times u raised to the n minus 1 times the derivative of u with respect to x. OK, so that's a, a review of some uh, basic how to take various derivatives. Now let's talk about derivatives of higher order or higher order derivatives.
So we have um, some function of x. f prime is oftentimes what we'll just write to describe the derivative of f with respect to x. f prime prime is often what we'll use to describe the derivative of f prime, the derivative of df dx. And we can also write that as the second derivative, d, d squared df dx squared, right? That's the second derivative. Where the, the above is the first derivative. And we can continue with f triple prime, which is equal to the derivative of the second derivative. And we can also write that as d raised d three f dx three, the third derivative. and so on. Let's talk about, I wanted to talk about, now that we know how to take derivatives, or we're reminded of how to take derivatives, let's look at Le Hôpital's rule. And this is a, a valuable rule for evaluating limits where the, at the limit, the denominator is equal to zero or uh, limits of d indeterminate form. And Leopito's rule states that we can take the limit as x approaches some arbitrary value, a, of the quotient of two functions of x, say f of x in the numerator and g of x in the denominator, and that's equal to the limit of the quotients of the derivatives of the two functions. So this is Le Hôpital's rule. And let me go over a, a relatively simple proof. And it's I'm using a, a simple one. If we consider the case in which f evaluated at point A, is equal to zero, and g evaluated at point a is equal to zero. So again, we want to evaluate the limit of f of x over g of x as x approaches a. We can write that as the limit as x approaches of a of f of x minus f of a, because you remember that f of a is equal to zero, divided by the limit, or, sorry, divided by the denominator, which is g of x minus g of a, which again is equal to zero. And we can write that just as we can write the limit of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a in the numerator divided by g of x minus g of a all over x minus a.
and that is equal to the limit of the numerator, which by now hopefully you'll recognize is a derivative, divided by the limit of the denominator, which is also equal to the derivative, and so that's equal to f prime evaluated at point A divided by g prime evaluated at point A. And that is equal to the limit as x approaches A of f prime of x divided by g prime of x. Okay, so we've done a, a relatively simple proof of L'Hopital's rule. So let's look at an example application. Let's consider the limit as x approaches 0 of, for example, sine squared 2x divided by x squared. Okay, so this is an indeterminate form because um, we can't just put 0 in the denominator. So let's take the derivative of the numerator. And so we have 2 sine 2x. That's the derivative of the sine. And then we have to take the derivative of of sine 2x, so that's cosine 2x times 2, and then the deriv derivative of the denominator is just 2x, and that's equal to 4 sine 2x cosine 2x over 2x. Okay, so L'Hopital's rule um, says that we just take the ratios of the two derivatives and we should be able to figure out the limit, but, but we're still left with an, a limit of indeterminate form because if we set x equal to zero, we'll have the denominator equal to zero. But you're, you'll notice that by taking the derivative, we've reduced the exponent on the denominator by one. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule again Right? We can say that um, we can take the limit as x approaches 0 of f prime of x g over g prime of x is equal to the limit of the ratios of the derivatives of those two functions, which in this case is f prime prime of x over g prime prime of x. And when we do that, we find we take the derivative of that, we have 8 cosine, the derivative of sine is cosine 2x, and we have cosine 2x, and then we have to add that to the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine, so we have minus 4 sine 2x uh, sine 2x, and then we have to multiply 2 to take the derivative of 2x. That's the numerator, and then the denominator just becomes a 2. So this becomes 8 times cosine squared 2x minus sine squared 2x all over 2. And taking the limit as x goes to 0, we don't have the problem of 0 being in the denominator. Of course, the sine of 0 is 0. The cosine, of, cosine squared of 0 is just 1. And so we have, we're just left with 8 over 2. And that's just equal to 4. Okay, so that's an example of L'Hopital's rule. So let's quickly go over uh, 
some derivatives of some specific functions. Okay, so the derivative with respect to x of e to the u power, where again u is a function of x, is simply equal to e to the u du dx. You'll recall that e was the solution to df dx is equal to x. So when we take the derivative of e, we just get e, and then of course we have to take the derivative of the function u. So this was, uh, this was, well, part of the definition of e. The derivative with respect to x of the log of an arbitrary function of u of, of x is equal to, we have to, is 1 over u times du dx. The derivative of sine u is cosine u du dx. The derivative of cosine u is equal to minus sine u du dx. And I'm going to write right next to this the derivative of hyperbolic sine is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of u du dx. And the derivative with respect to x of cosh u is equals to positive cinch u du dx. So as I mentioned briefly before, uh, the hyperbolic functions behave similarly to trigonometric functions. So these are, of course, um, not all the derivatives that can be taken. You can refer to various tables for taking derivatives of other functions, and you may need to do that for your homework. So this wraps up our two-part video for about limits and derivatives. Hopefully this will help you uh, become re-familiar with taking derivatives and um, become more comfortable in computing them.